12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold trim with green and red, and weighing in at 130 pounds. He comes to us from Ghana with a professional record of 37 victories, 26 by KO, with only three defeats and two draws. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger, the former three-time champion of the world, the professor. Azuma! And of course, the ring coming out of the red corner. His opponent also weighing in at 130 pounds. Now living and fighting out of Zilmar, California, he brings a record of 41 and 2. 23 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting a native son of Mexico, the WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Gabriel Cruella. Short but sweet for Marty Denkin. And uh, you see the trainers leave. That's Joe Goosen on the uh, side there leaning in to Gabe Ruelas. That is Gabe who has not cracked a smile, has not looked very loose truthfully. Across the way of Zuma Nelson. Seems fairly happy and uh, <laughs> stoic and just enjoying the moment as he came in the ring. Doesn't necessarily mean, however, that you'll perform that way. Well, usually, when fighters are that happy and not loose, they don't perform well. There's the hook getting in from Gabriel Ellis. That is true, Dave. In their first match, it was a 12 round decision. It went to Nelson. Ruelas said afterwards he thought he was much too timid. He's not starting off timid in this fight, is he? Now, uh, starting with the wide shots here. Maybe he'll establish the jet for winging shots over the top, but still not as wide as their first shot. The first fight, he was all over the place with that. You get the feeling he wants to go to the body more against Azuma Nelson as well. Our third man with us uh, here at ringside, Oscar De La Hoya, the WBO and IBF lightweight champion. And of course, you fought Rafael, his brother. Rafael made the mistake. Oh, my, there goes. See if Nelson can follow up. It's been a pattern of some fights early for him to get in some early difficulty before he finds himself. And he, again, the wide shots. He is taking all kinds of chances. And Oscar, I'll go to you. Rafael came in very aggressively against you. That's what Gabriel has done here, and he's paid for it. One thing that's happening is Gabriel's opening himself too much. He's too wild, and Azuma Nelson's going to take advantage of that situation. I hope uh, Gabriel Ruelas has, uh, has recovered from that shot, and uh, hopefully we'll see a, a good uh, long fight. Well, we'll see. It was a flash knockdown, but it was a nice punch by, by Nelson. There's no question Gabriel Ruelas looks wild in this first round. And one of the things that has made him different than Rafael, who certainly is a fine fighter and was a fine fighter, though Raf was given the wildness. Gabriel is less so in his professional career, but not off this performance. No, he's really big time wild in the later stages of this round here. Sweeping shots with the right hand. He needs to settle down, start it with the jab. The power can come off the jab. He doesn't have to start the lead punches with the looping action. He pays again. Could he be overly aggressive and too emotional here? 
Seconds remaining in round one, a round in which surprisingly Gabriel Ellis was sent to the canvas by 37-year-old Azuma Nelson, who looks like a poised veteran. And again, the wide shot. And he caught him with the hook. Well, we'll be fascinated to hear in Ruelas's corner. Yeah, take a deep breath. No, look at him. Take a deep breath. But well, we're in Nelson's you corner. Turn the target real oh quick. You make you fake, you make him two for two on his hand. Come on, come on. You make him two for two on his hand. Your right hand when you're throwing that hook. You understand? Go ahead. He's going to try to counter your jab with his right hand. Keep that fucking jab coming back right to your chin. Well, Ruelas opening up with the wide shots here, leaving himself open as he follows Nelson. That time, he did not pay for it. This time, he did. As we head into round two, excellent corner work by Joe Goosen because he reminded him what it appeared the game plan was, to go in with your hands close, get on the inside, and then use your strength to work to the body and head. Don't throw wild punches from the outside. He reminded Ruelas of what they really had planned to do against Nelson. In any case, Azuma Nelson, the two-time world champion, shows you that at the age of 37, he's still got some pop in that right hand. Well, the professor had himself a nice first round. We'll see what adjustments are made here. And Ruelas is doing exactly what he did in the first round, the opposite of what Goosen told him. He's still throwing the wild shots on the outside. He is seeing the opening out there and a little too anxious. When you jab, you are working for your opening. You're trying to create it. When you throw the bomb from outside, you're rolling the dice, trying to get it right now. See, and he could work his way inside and if he used those tight hands that Joe Goose is talking about. And then that hook would score as well. It would be shorter, it would be more compact, and it would be far more effective. In any case, for Azuma Nelson, he could not have drawn up a first round or round and a half that would have gone as well as this one. Gabriel Ellis appearing tight, and that tightness contributed. There's the uppercut on the inside by now by Ruelas. When a fighter gets in that kind of problem early the knockdown, the best thing is to try and start over, get the jab working, regroup. It's a long fight. You're 12 years younger. Figure that that will play into it. But it hasn't been that way quite so in round two here for Ruelas. Again, the wild punch. And Nelson is throwing very good counter punches. Even the ones that are missing are coming very, very close when Ruelas comes in lunging. Well, Rafael Ruelas not only lost to Oscar De La Hoya, but lost the subsequent fight. And so his career is not in the best of shape right now. And he is at ringside watching his brother, who's had a tough, tough time here in this beginning stages of this fight against the Zuma Nelson. We're in round two, about a half a minute left to go. Nelson, in one sense, wants to load up, but he's, he's waiting here, hoping that Ruelas opens up for him. Good hook. Sends Ruelas back again. It's a very wild game, Ruelas, and shorter punching Azuma Nelson. There's the uppercut on the inside by Ruelas, but by and large, Azuma Nelson doing a good job of counterpunching. They better look out. The bell rang. Marty Denkin should be in there. I guess Marty didn't hear the... He just made the indication that he's not hearing it. He did not hear the bell, and there you see him. We're right next to the, uh, the bell here. It is not that loud a bell, and the crowd was yelling, although we heard it pretty well. Well, Nelson over the top, nice left hook, right hand driving Morellas back. 
Couple shots there, Ross missing wildly, but there he ducked, then landed a left hook. Later he would get inside and land an uppercut, which is what he would like to do more of in this fight. Now there's Nelson with his best action of the round. Unloading here, waiting for a mistake to pounce on. We head into round three, and I'll tell you there was some interesting by play. Even as we were doing the replay, I looked up in the corner of uh, Ruelas with his trainer, Joe Goosen. A very concerned look in the face of Ruelas. Joe asked him, do you feel better on the inside or the outside? And he was shaking his head. He couldn't figure out where he felt better. And uh, that's part of the problem here. Gabe Ruelas is really discombobulated in there. That knockdown, I think, in round one shocked him. I, I dare say, I think he's a little embarrassed about the start of this fight. And on top of that, he's not sure what strategically will work. Well, so, except for that, everything's okay. Basically, you hit on a couple of minor points that he liked <laughs> to adjust from. <laughs> but, Did I overstate the case, you think? <laughs> he wants to get the jab moving, but now, he, he is caught between styles, so he needs to put first put a good minute together, then try to put a good round together, find what's comfortable. It's a long fight. Or it can be anyway. We're in round three. Gabriel Ellis in the white trunks, the WBC super featherweight champion. Azuma Nelson, the former WBC super featherweight champion. They fought once before. Ruelas tried to lift the title from Nelson, lost a 12-round decision in what was a, a very um, strategic, almost chess game-like match between the two. Very little here in the jabbing department. Byrell shows a little bit of it there. If he gets back to that, does more of that, it can open up a lot more for him. Oscar De La Hoya, why do you think Ruelas is reluctant to do what Joe Goosen told him? Move in on the inside, behind a good defense, and then work on the inside. Well, I believe a big mistake that Gabriel Ruelas is making, he's loading up on his punches too much. He should go into uh, throwing slow, soft combinations, and he'll land more against Uma Nelson. He wants to knock him out, he wants to go for that knockout, and uh, he's missing a lot of shots and leaving himself wide open. In other fights, though, we've seen him do that in the first couple rounds and then adjust a little bit and get back into what works for him. Let's see if he does it here. The left hook misses. Now, Nelson has been economic on his punches. There's a nice right hand that may have stunned Nelson. And that was thrown from a big distance, too. And let us remember Azuma Nelson, who is 37 years of age, could well be susceptible to some power punches by Ruelas. But the 18-month layoff, while it could have an effect, at the very least for Nelson, during these early rounds when it would be susceptible, he's had the good round. In the beginning of a fight, it has served as a regrouping aspect for him. If it comes back to fight him, it will be later. Nelson missing with some wild punches. And that will do it for the third round as... Uh, Well, you're going to watch Ruelas get the big shot in here, actually partially blocked by Ru by Nelson, looked better at the time, and that's why. From a distance, it doesn't have the same type of an effect. And a little mutual respect coming in here at the end of round three. So Gabe Ruelas comes out here for round four against Azuma Nelson. Ruelas is 12 years his junior at the age of 25, but Azuma Nelson likes to call himself the professor and at times has been that to many, many fighters. He has faced the best in two weight divisions over the last 15 years, Azuma Nelson. Beat Wilfredo Gomez for a title. He said he lost to Salvador Sanchez. Along the way, lost to Pernell Whitaker in an excellent boxing match. Has beaten Juan Laporte, Jeff Bennett. 
and others. And so he's been in against the best, beaten many of the best, and as we said, had championships in two weight divisions. And to talk about some of the parity in this division, he's got a draw and a loss against James Leha. Relis with a win over Leha, so Relis should be on top, right? You yeah. would think so. <laughs> and yet, no. Now Nelson moving him back and throwing good body punches. Well, if he stays out of trouble, Rorellis really can succeed at wearing Nelson down. And he needs to slow himself down first before he slows Nelson down. There's the hook. He gets there, but it was so wide that he diminished some of the power, gave Rorellis. This is really, as from a, a technique standpoint, one of the poorest performances I've seen Gabriel Wallace get. Uh, we've seen some other fights that he has started that way and quickly changed it, but to stay on the outside, fire shots from the outside for so long is not good. You get countered, you lose your power, and you bounce. And here's the irony. That's not to say he might not knock Azuma Nelson out sometime in this fight. With a bomb. He might land a bomb and knock him out. It's, and look, he's getting to him, isn't he? But it still isn't a technical success. But he's having a good round here against Nelson. And I guess maybe when you're 37 and you've been off for 18 months, you'll be susceptible to this. Well, it's really getting through on him here. And now Nelson decides to gamble with him and fire some big shots. Nelson's punches are losing a little bit of their steam, I believe, but look at the roundhouse rights by Ruelas. He is capable of so much more on the inside if he would work properly. Now, we don't usually see him this awkward for this long. Oscar, are you surprised that Ruelas is... Oh, wow, there he goes! Down from a shot from Azuma Nelson, and he's hurt! I don't know if he can continue. generous count too that was a very beneficial count for Ruelas Let's take a look here. The shot to the body on top of the head. Relis is down. The shot on the top of the head seemed to do a lot of the damage there. Rib shot hurt. Then right by the temple, got him. And then there's one more after he's down. Which, by the way, Nelson could have been penalized for. And that count was very close to the 10. Ruelas barely getting there. And that's why you heard Joe Grusin. Rafael Ruelas, the brother of Gabe, once stayed down too long because and lost the fight as a result of it while he was looking at Joe Goosen. Feeling in Gabe Ruelas coming off the Jimmy Garcia fight, the tragedy of Garcia dying afterwards, could there be something in him that's making it difficult for him to compete? I don't know. You have to be inside his head. At I know that's a, it's a lot of speculation. But even his resignation while on the canvas, which we heard Joe Goosen being very animated about. And by the way, there is a time in the corner where you should be that way, and that was one of the times. Right now, Azuma Nelson is just taking him apart. This could end it, quickly. It doesn't look like Gabriel Ellis really wants to fight on. It really doesn't. He just does not. Gabriel doesn't seem like he wants this right now. He's very close to losing it all here. That's it. It's over. Rage by Joe Goosen, but I'll tell you what. That young man may not have wanted to continue. There's a lot of emotion in that ring. You're not seeing anybody by Ruelas here. It's by his corner. 
and Azuma Nelson marching around the ring with a, a lot of emotion as well. Well, it's a disappointing scenario for Gabriel Ellis and his people, but this man, Azuma Nelson, at the age of 37, who was so confident, wasn't he, during the course of the week, did get the job done. He was loose. He was doing everything. Azuma Nelson had a good feeling about this fight beforehand, maintained the looseness, made Gabriel Ellis pay early, and just kept on him. Oscar De La Hoya, there was, it seemed, a confusion by Gabe Willis, even from the beginning of this fight. Didn't seem to know how to fight this fight. Fought on a lot of emotion to try and knock Nelson out. That didn't work, and once it didn't work, what was left for him? It was very difficult for Gabe Willis to fight this fight tonight because of what happened in the past. But Azuma Nelson showed that he's still, he's still a good warrior. He's still the professor, and uh, he came out victorious tonight. Unfortunately, Gabriel Buenos lost. I believe he did give up in, in the round prior to that because he did receive a good body shot from Azuma Nelson, and that hurt him for the later rounds. And then one more punch when he was down didn't help matters either. And as they celebrate, Azuma Nelson let us not lose track. We see Gabriel Wellis with his trainer, Joe Guzzi. It is surely disappointing for him as he loses his WBC Super Featherweight title. Let us not lose sight of what Oscar De La Hoya pointed out, that for Azuma Nelson, who wins the title for the third time a world title at the age of 37, it is a remarkable, remarkable achievement. Michael Buffer has the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Marty Dankin calls a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 20 seconds of round number five. The winner winning his fourth world title. And once again, the WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, the Professor Azuma. And so it is official. Azuma Nelson at the age of 37 has recaptured the WBC Super Featherweight title for the second time. He defeats Gabriel Ruelas. And for Gabriel Ruelas, who even in winning his last fight, had to deal with tragedy, now has to deal with the disappointment of losing his title. A difficult moment for him, but in his defeat, Nelson, who performed in a way that maybe a lot of people didn't think he could at the age of 37. After an 18-month layoff, he got the job done. Took away this man's WBC Super Featherweight title. And here in the outdoor arena at Fantasy Springs, there's silence. Most of these fans, of course, were Wellis fans, and they are stunned by what has occurred. And we take a look at what did, in fact, take place at the end of that fight. It was a body shot that really got Ruelas. He had been down already in this fight. And here was Nelson on the inside. This is where the fight was stopped. This is not where he was knocked down, but where he was stopped. You see the protest of Joe Goosen. Now, the reason, perhaps, his protest came was because it looked at that moment like not a lot of punches were landing. But in defense of Marty Denkin, let me say, not much was coming from Gabriel Ellis throughout the last 40 seconds before Nelson went after him. Not a huge protest by Ruelas. He looks a little shocked, but of course, there is a big protest from the corner of um, Gabriel Ellis in the form of Joe Goose and his trainer. In any case, they exalt in victory in a zoom announcement corner. Dave Von Tempo is up there. Let's go to him right now. Okay, thanks, Al. Azuma, are you surprised that you were able to do this apparently so easily? No, I mean, I, I came to do it. I mean, I know I'm going to take him out. <laughs> this is not a match. I'm looking for the lightweight title. I'm just here now to make a record. That's all. I, I mean, I, I know before from the beginning, I know this is not a match. What was the key to the fight for you? First what? What was the key to the fight? What was the big difference, do you think? 
the, uh, after the fi after the first fight uh, uh, between the first and second fights, what was you different? Know, the first fight, I wasn't myself, and if I says if I told somebody if I tell somebody I wasn't myself, he'll say oh because uh, because I didn't do well, you know. So I have to prove it here that the first fight I'm not I'm not myself, and this time I'm ready. And you were very loose before this fight, so you sensed it. Yes, sir. I mean, I mean, I've changed so much for this fight, and I, 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 I know that I'm coming to take the title back. Um, I, I, I told Daniels that I'm going to give them a, a Christmas bonus, and I have to. I'm going to my promise. I mean, he's a good, he's a good guy, he's a good boxer, and uh, he's lucky. He has uh, one of the best trainers in the world. Okay, thank you very much, Azuma Nelson, and the, the trainer is over here, Joe Gustin, along with Gabe Burrell. They'll make their way right into your picture here. The congratulations are being expressed as we see the fighters embrace. And we'll get some comments here, some of the camaraderie that's going on. And first of all, as we see, let's get some comments first from Joe. Joe, you were enraged there. What did you sense? What was going on? What got you so mad? Well, I wasn't that I was mad. I was I was trying to get Gabriel going. He went down, got hit with a good body shot. I tried to pump him up as best as I could. I pushed any buttons I thought would help. Did you sense Gabe's heart was all the way in this in the last couple of rounds? I don't know. He can only tell me how far his heart was in this. Uh, Gabriel fought hard. Azuma was great. I told everybody he's great. Now, don't count him out. I've seen Gabriel fight better. He can fight better. He will fight better again. But Gabriel has to tell you exactly what was in his heart. What was going on, Gabe, for you? Well, I guess, you know, I uh, honestly can say that uh, my heart wasn't in the fight. I mean, even if I had won the fight, you know, I would, I would say the same thing. But uh, just uh, other things, I don't know, you know, uh, having fought, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know what happened. You know, I, I give him all that credit. It's a great fight. Okay, when did you realize it wasn't there for you? When did you feel your heart wasn't quite right? Well... I mean, I guess uh, from the beginning of the fight, you know, I just, just, wasn't in, just wasn't in it. Do you think you'll fight some more? Definitely. Definitely. Oh, yeah, I'll be back. Okay, well, there's a very good two fights here to the Zuma Nelson. That's the story from up here. Let's take it back now down to Al Bernstein. Well, thank you, Dave. Thanks, that was certainly intriguing from not only Joe Goosen, but also Gabriel Ellis, as they, uh, they themselves wonder about just how far Gabriel Ellis could take this fight tonight, and in fact, what were his thoughts coming into it, and even Gabe was puzzled by the lack of fire in his effort. I think uh, perhaps we can all speculate on different things, but it would only be speculation. In any case, Azuma Nelson, a fighter who would appear, has his number to an extent because he is able to beat him for the second time and do so in a very convincing fashion. A, a fashion that really, I think, is surprising to many people because while we may have expected many kinds of fights and many kinds of scenarios, we surely did not expect this one really. No, not with Nelson making it appear to be so easy. We had seen Ruelas change so much so positively in the last couple of years, grow so much. And as soon as you get to be 30 in boxing, people are second-guessing you about should you still be in. 37, they think there's no way. And off the layoff, we see very few fighters off a layoff perform at this level. That is true.